What is good, Neo family? It's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I'm going to break down what's going on with Neo stock, what you should be watching for going forward. I'm also going to break down what the technicals are telling us what you should be watching for as well, and what's likely to happen as we approach tomorrow and this week for the markets and Neo. I'm going to talk about Neo, Tesla, Spy, and a couple of other tickers, and break down why you should be very cautious going into this week. Before I break anything down about all this information, though, let me just mention a couple of things. Firstly, I am not a financial planner, so take none of this as financial advice whatsoever. And also, don't forget about the Moomoo link. The offer ends very soon. Deposit $100 and you're guaranteed five free stocks with a $100 cash reward. The offer ends in just five days, so check it out before they run out. With that, out of the way, let's get on with the video. All right, guys, so when it comes to NEO, this thing was down 5.49% for the day, and it broke below the support that I was mentioning on Thursday. I told you guys, if you want to turn bullish on NEO, it has to try to hold above $9, and if it broke below the 200 EMA, which was kind of like stuck between these, this thing would likely start to sink down. And we ended up breaking and closing below the 200, and the trend is starting to look a lot more bearish. Now, even though NEO is looking weaker, and we have this potential like, distribution phase you could draw a distribution schematic right over here and uh, look at how institutions are dictating the price in that manner you could see that uh yes the market may slow down this week especially because we have jerome powell speaking again uh, we need some more confirmation on spy to get a much bigger drop but the odds are favoring that a big test is coming soon uh, but the thing about NEO is, yes, it could sink down. It, it may sink down this week, but going into like the start of the week after, we have deliveries coming out, right? At the very end of June, we're almost there. Deliveries will be coming out, I think, closer to like July time, very, very early July. So maybe July 1st or the 2nd. And then we're going to find out how NEO did. I think it's going to be on Sunday, the, the first Sunday of July, which is like July 2nd, I believe. And we're going to find out some very important information. So if NEO could reach these targets, it could always bounce and make a very big move. I talked about this yesterday. But now the question is, what about like until then or like before then, right? What, what's likely going to happen as we approach that period? So I would honestly be fine with Neo dropping down, but just to cool off the RSI and just to cool off, you know, uh, because then there won't be way too much more downside to come afterwards, any like negative catalysts. And if it does try to base around the $7 area, which is where it has very strong support, it could get a massive bounce later on as we approach July, if we get some good numbers. But until then, right, we have some time we have some time for the market to slow down firsthand. I want to break down why that is and what's going on with the market now. So to start us off, we have you know a couple of earnings from like Carnival. Then we have like Manchester United and just a couple of other ones like Jefferies. For Wednesday, we have like Micron and just a couple of others. And then we have Nike and just a few others. Nothing too massive for the week. Nike is a little bit more significant for retail, but nothing too huge. And then let me also add that for the data coming out for the week, for tomorrow, there's not really anything going on. Uh, for Tuesday, we have the, some data involving houses and new home sales. Nothing too huge. But then for Wednesday, we have something big coming. We have Jerome Powell giving another speech. Did you guys see how the market dropped this week? And I'm recording this for, on, on Saturday, by the way. So I guess it would be the previous week for you guys. Did you guys see how the market was selling off basically when Powell was speaking? Uh, it really shows how impactful his words are and how big the market is going to be reacting to what he ends up saying. Powell was saying that the Fed may give us two more rate hikes if the U.S. economy remains too hot, and that is so far what is going on. Now, if that's the case, and if Powell continues to reiterate these hawkish things, the market could slow down even more. But this will not only just affect the markets for Wednesday, but also for Thursday, because Powell is going to be speaking again. He's giving two speeches on Wednesday, one in the morning and then one late, late, late at night, probably on a Thursday morning, if you are on like the East Coast, uh, the second speech he gives may affect how the market moves on Thursday in the morning, especially. So we have to be very careful. Powell does have a big impact on the markets and what he says will affect how they move. Now, as far as Neo goes, there was some news that came out that on June 20th, this was just a couple of days ago, Neo attended the roundtable for Chinese entrepreneurs in Berlin, once again, helping Neo to gain more exposure out there, meet new connections in uh, Germany and continue to grow their business model. I think Neo is in a very, very good hands moving forward, and they have made some very good moves. My only concern about it was the fact that they waited a little bit too long to be like cutting prices and doing things like that. But at least they did it. And if anything, things are looking a lot more promising now for the second half of the year for the stock and also for the company based on what they said. Hopefully, by the time we get to July, things could look a lot better. But we'll have to wait and see on the data because the data and actions speak louder than words.
Now, if we're NEO's data right now, we can see the price per ratio starting to decline, which is showing some relative weakness for NEO. NEO is getting a little bit weaker according to this. On top of that, uh, you know, we broke below some major support right here at this like 8.57 area. Barclays is saying NEO is going to perform equally with the market, but since then we don't have too much new news that came out. NEO is only green about 49% of the time on Mondays, and don't forget that NEO tends to do better during. Uh, the third hours and during the fourth hours of the trading day, and also during the sixth hour, Neo tends to do a little bit better. Those are Neo's better hours. June tends to be a weaker month for Neo. It's only green like forty-seven percent of the time, and I, I would say that Neo pumped for much of this month before it's slowing down for the end, and that's completely normal. But July tends to be a little bit better. Neo is green about fifty percent of the time historically in July, so we'll hope if we get something better. And for the short interest, we saw a bit of a decline followed by one more pump to about 9 million NEO shares shorted. So nothing too significant right now. But now let's talk about the data. Let's talk about what's happening to the stock. So for NEO, like I said, uh, we are below the 200 EMA. We're below this 8.5 support. So it's looking to me like uh, it's basically trying to head for this um, uh, uh, unfilled gap, which came from the pre-market right over here. So that's going to take NEO down to about 7.8. That seems like a very reasonable target now that NEO started to give some bearish signals. And it's going to likely end up reaching that level very soon, in my opinion. Now, without the extended hours, we could actually notice that NEO has quite a few gaps that also form. There's one above here, but I don't really think NEO is going to bounce that hard unless we get a very bullish catalyst. But for now, on the four hour without the extended hours, it's also looking weaker. But we have this gap down here at about where eight dollars is so i do see it basically get, getting back to the sevens it just looks a lot weaker and it's not just because of neo it's also because of the whole market i mean if you look at spy for example uh we have this gap i don't know if it's showing right here there's a gap down here around like this 422 area for confirmation of a potential gap fill it needs to break below 430 and that's going to turn a lot more bearish if it bounces off 430 it has potential to try to hold up but is it really going to bounce off 430 and hold up if we have Powell speaking? That is up to Powell and the markets to decide, but the odds don't favor it bouncing in my eyes. So it's looking weaker from the four hour time frame. The market's continuing to look weaker. The odds are favoring downside, looking at the four hour and also on the daily. If you look at the, like uh, the MACD, we're about to get a PPO crossover right here uh, to the bearish side. So the odds are looking more bearish for SPY. But for confirmation of the bigger move to the downside, I'm going to be watching for a test of 430. If it tries to bounce off 430, it has potential to hold these levels. If it breaks below 430 because of Powell or whatever reason it is, then there's going to be a lot more downside to come for the markets. And I think the odds are favoring that as of right now looking at the trend. But we'll have to wait and see. But I do believe the odds favor the downside. We're going to be watching that 430 level as a very important support. If that breaks, by the way, I forgot to say this, we're going to likely fill the gap down in the 422 area and potentially come down to 420. For Tesla, that's a potential head and shoulders. There's a neckline around this like uh, 247 area to 250, like around there. I would say like 247. If it breaks 247, it's going to likely come all the way down to fill the gap around 235 at this point. Uh, it tried to break out on Friday. It really wanted to coming back to like 262. It tried, but it ended up failing on us. And now we have a potential right shoulder that has developed. In order to invalidate this, we need to see Tesla break and hold above like 265 and then start pushing higher. Uh, if it breaks 270, then like 275 could come. But I just, I'm looking at the chart and it looks less likely now. The four hours looking more bearish and we have a potential head and shoulders. I was waiting for confirmation on this and we finally got some confirmation. And once we get a break below the 50 EMA and potentially, you know, the, the important neckline around that 247 area, there's going to likely be more downside to come. Unfortunately, not much we could do about it. It is what it is, right? Uh, last but not least, I'll talk about the QQQ before NEO. For the triple Q, this is also looking kind of bearish, just like Tesla's a potential head and shoulders like formation. Uh, it's trying to hold above, I think, the one hour 200 EMA, which is around this like 361 area. Basically, 360 is going to be the key level. We have this imbalance down here. So if it breaks below 360, this thing is going to sink to 355 or lower. If it tries to bounce off 360, it has potential to hold up. But I think with Tesla potentially dropping and the market slowing down, there's a good chance it's going to come all the way down to fill the gaps down at like the 354 area. So I think the odds favor downside from a technical standpoint, looking at the current four hour time frame as well. But like I said, I mean, I'm going to be watching for confirmation at like 360 just to be safe. Uh, if you are interested in playing the triple Q, but the odds are just still favoring downside, just looking at it from a technical standpoint. For NEO, all right, uh, if it wants to turn bullish, it needs to try to break above 
both of these resistances around this like 8.5 area, then 8.83, then $9. But if this thing continues to sink down and we look at the MACD on the four hour time frame, we have the potential to see this thing come all, come all the way back down to $8, which is where like the uh, gap would be without the extended hours. And there's a pre-market gap at like 7.8 with the extended hours. So it's going to likely come all the way down to that level into the sevens, in my opinion. 7.8 is going to be my target. And it's going to likely try to start basing around the seven area. So seven to seven point. Uh, five around that area is where it has very strong support. I think it could come all the way down there. And then it, it all depends on how NEO does for deliveries and beyond. If deliveries are good, this thing could always get a bounce as we approach July. If not, there could be a rug pull. So please be open minded and be very careful with NEO. I am optimistic looking at their confidence, but like I said before, actions speak louder than words. So I'm still optimistic for NEO. I think the thing has the potential to bounce. I'm really hoping that happens later on. But until the bounce comes, this thing has more potential for downside. And we're just going to have to read the trend and look at the chart from an unbiased manner. All right, guys. So thank you for listening. Please enjoy your weekend. Remain calm, cool, and collected. And I'll see you guys in the next video very soon. NEO to the moon as the long term is still incredibly bright. And peace out.